if I had a chance, I'd take the train rather than the plane. I like it because of the lounge cars. Uh, people sit down and tell you things they'd never tell you anywhere else because they think they'll never see you again. I mean, it's kind of like a big uh, rolling confessional. So I'm on my way to Chicago, and this guy comes up and says, Hi, can I have a seat? I said, Sure, why not? Sit down. What's up? He said, Nothing much. I said, What do you do? He said, I'm in the Navy. He was in civvies, so I didn't know. He, sa he said, I'm uh, stationed down in Guantanamo Bay. I said, Where's that? He said, Cuba. Oh, really? Cuba? What's it like in Cuba? I've always wondered what that is. He said, We can't go into Cuba, man. We go down to the Virgin Islands, so we got to leave and go down there. I said, what, you go down there to get laid? He said, no, I never paid for sex in my life. Yeah, I know, really, I, I get picked up. See, I, I, I swing, I, I get picked up by couples. I'm into uh, triangles, you know, uh, threesomes, pyramids. There's power in that, man. But he was cute enough, I could see that. But uh, he had the only strange thing about him was he was a little demented. He had small ears. They, hadn't, they were like little pasta shells, like his body had grown and his ears hadn't caught up with him yet. So he was telling me, look, I can't talk to you, man, because what I do is top secret. I said, where are you stationed now? He said, Philadelphia. I said, oh, come on. What's top secret in Philadelphia? You can do it. He said, no, man, I'm not. I really, I can't do it. Where are you going now? I said, oh, he's, I'm on my way to Pittsburgh. I said, what's there? He said, my wife. I haven't seen her in a year. Oh, whoa. She must have uh, been swinging a little bit too herself. Oh, no, man. She's got cobwebs growing between her legs. But I wouldn't mind if I uh, watched a man fuck her. I mean, I could do that. I wouldn't mind that at all. I said, so what's top secret in Philadelphia? He says, well, I, you know, he had a few more rum cokes, and he told me. He said, what it is is I'm chained, you see, to a, uh, uh, I'm chained to a button five hours a day uh, that fires a nuclear warhead, a nuclear rocket. I'm on a battleship. So I'm in this waterproof booth, and I f I'm supposed to fire a button that fires a rocket out of this waterproof sleeve. And I go, oh, really? Why waterproof? I mean, that's the first thing I could think of asking him, you know, from then on. He said, because if the ship sinks, you see, and we go down, I can still fire the rocket. And up, up, up it goes. Man, I get a fucking erection every time I think of shooting a, a rocket on those Russians. So he says, so I'm down there. I like blue, flo uh, blue, blue flake cocaine. That's my favorite drug. Comes up from South America. He said, the Navy can test for marijuana. You smoke a joint. Ten days later, they do a urine sample. But with blue flake cocaine, they can't test. So I'm there, and I'm taking the cocaine and the coffee, and I'm there five hours waiting to fire that rocket. Russian, uh, that rocket on the Russians. Now, I like the fucking Navy, man. Uh, I've traveled uh, uh, Sweden, uh, Africa, uh, India. I didn't, I didn't like Africa. It's the only country I didn't like. I don't know. It's, it's not prejudice. It's got nothing to do with prejudice, man. I just, black women just don't turn me on. Now, here's a guy that can go to a foreign country. If the women don't turn him on, like he doesn't see the country. It's like a fuzzball, you know, just a piece of fog, an outline. He steps through it and just walks out to the other side of the world. He's very patriotic. And he's on. He's telling me about how he hates the Russians. And we go by Three Mile Island. He stands up and so Loops, sits back down. He says, man, uh, the only country I liked was Sweden. I said, why? He said, you see real Ruskies there, man. They are so dumb. They're only allowed two beers. We're completely drunk. They've got guards, a couple of guns. So we say, hey, Ruskies, what's it like in Moscow this time of year? And we send over a Swedish whore to, whore to cry in their laps, you know? So they're freaking out. They're so dumb, man. They, I said, what do you mean dumb? He says, their rockets are rusty. They're going to pop, sputter, land in our cornfields. I said, haven't you read in the literature? It's bad enough if they land in the cornfields. He said, no, really, they still speak through tubes on their ships. They don't have electric intercoms. They speak through tubes. And suddenly, I had this fondness for the Russian Navy. In fact, for all of Russia, the thought of these children speaking through, like, paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls, where you could still hear doubt, compassion, love, fear. So I said, listen, man, you don't want to set that bomb off. Look what happened to the guy that dropped the bomb in Hiroshima. He went crazy. He said, that guy wasn't fucking properly brainwashed, he says. I, he says proudly, have been properly brainwashed. Also, it's a nuclear destruct club. There's a lot of us are going to be pushing the button. Suddenly, I felt I was looking my death in the face. And I began to protest just a little bit, and he was catching on to it. I said, but aren't you afraid you're going to die? I mean, even if a bunch of you press the button, right? He said, no, we got pubs, man. Everything was abbreviated. I said, what are pubs? He says, Navy publications. They tell us where to go, right, after the bomb goes off. So we'll be safe. And I pictured him down in New Zealand, starting this demented, small-eared, pea-brain, new humanoid race. And I thought, maybe we'll be lucky he'll end up in Africa 